Greetings, beloveds, and peace be with you. I'm Reverend Mitzi, Vicar of Larkspur. Actually, I'm not the Vicar of Larkspur. That's kind of a joke because we, Ron and I have been watching a lot of episodes of The Vicar of Dibley on BritBox, if you have it. It's a really, really funny show. Hilarious, in fact. And now Ron has a new nickname for me, The Vicar of Larkspur. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I'm so very glad that you are here. Something within you was calling you to watch. Thank you for answering that divine call and welcome to Unity of Tempe Online. So here we are, we're in the second week of February. And as I shared in January, we'll be exploring at least one of the 12 powers, foundational teachings of unity per month this year. Charles Fillmore, co-founder of Unity with his wife Myrtle, wrote the book, The 12 Powers of Man, stating that each of us have 12 qualities that are part of our spiritual DNA. And these powers, well, they're part of the I am presence, and they were present in Jesus. And they're also present and active in us to the extent that we allow them to be awakened. So in January, we looked at the foundational power of faith. And today we look at the power that unity has associated with Feb February. Love, right? Well, <laughs> that's what we'd expect, but actually, no. The second power, the power that un unity dedicates for February is strength. Wait, what? Strength? And not love for February? Well, I thought about switching and sharing on the power of love today, but I was guided as I prayed that actually strength is a perfect follow-up to my message from last week, which, if you haven't seen, is still up on the website with all of the other messages. And in fact, we're on two pages of messages now. So February, second week of February, and it is strength. So because after all, who can't use a little more strength in body, mind and spirit to support us during these times that we're living through? And this power of strength, it's extremely generous, having with it additional gifts of patience, tolerance, steadfastness, and balance. Now, usually when we think of strength, we probably think of physical strength, going and working out at home right now, right, beloveds? But that's actually just a small part of this power. J.R.R. R. Tolkien said, It is not the strength of the body that counts, but the strength of the spirit. It's not the strength of the body that counts, but the strength of the spirit. Amen to that, right? Now, when we feel depleted of energy, and that we have the weight of the world on our shoulders. And yes, we are living through a pandemic. So it is entirely possible that at times you are feeling depleted of energy and that the weight of the shoulders, the world is on your shoulders. Well, when we stay there, it's an indication that we're leaning too much on our personal strength and not giving whatever it is, what it is up to God. One of my favorite scriptures, very favorite scriptures that I share a lot is from Psalms. It is, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Thank you, God. So now, each of the 12 powers have, has an apostle associated with it. And the apostle representing strength is Andrew. So 
What do we know about Andrew? Well, not a lot. <laughs> Actually, he's only mentioned 12 times in the New Testament, and four of those times are merely in a list of apostles. We do know that Andrew is the brother of the Apostle Peter, whom we looked at when we explored the power of faith. Now, while each of the Gospels refer to Andrew as Peter's brother, none of them refer to Peter as Andrew's brother. And this, as well as Peter's name always being listed before Andrew's in the Gospels, suggests that Andrew may have been the younger of the two brothers. We do know that Andrew like Peter and several other, other of the disciples, was a fisherman. In both Matthew and Mark, Jesus encounters Andrew while he's fishing with Peter. And we're also told that Andrew was one of two of John the Baptist's disciples to first follow Jesus, and that Andrew went and got his brother Peter and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which translated means the Christ. Now, in case you're not familiar with scripture, all that, or it's been a long time since you've read it, just a refresher that John the Baptist came first and many people believed that he actually was the Messiah. They were mistaken about that, the Christ, the anointed one. And so he had his own group of followers of which Andrew was one. But one day Jesus was walking by, John the Baptist noticed him, and then Andrew became a follower of Jesus. So there are actually only a few places where Andrew is in a speaking role, where he has lines, so to speak. And one is the story of the loaves and fishes, which takes place in John chapter 6. Now, while all of the four Gospels record the, record the feeding of the 5,000, only John mentions Andrew's role. And it's important because it gives us a little insight into Andrew. So the story is, and there's a lot more before, but I'm just going to really minuscule it down to get to the crux of it, Andrew's part in it, that a huge crowd had congregated around Jesus and the disciples. They'd been hearing of all of the healings that Jesus was doing, and they wanted part of the action. And Jesus, who always loved to take care of people, he loved to make sure that people were fed and, and that they were just really felt welcomed, he said to another disciple, Philip, where can we buy enough bread to feed all these people? I mean, it's a really great question. All these people are here and Jesus wants to know where they can buy enough bread to feed everyone. This is a little bit of a trick question because Jesus already, I am sure, knew what he was going to do. But he asked Philip perhaps to show that it was going to take a miracle to feed so many. And Philip replies to Jesus, more than half a year's salary worth of food wouldn't be enough for each person to have even a little bit. More than half a salary's worth of food. That wouldn't even be enough, Jesus, to feed everyone. Now, while Philip's reply was probably accurate, it lacked vision. But before we give Philip too bad a rap, don't we all at times lack a bit of vision? especially when overwhelmed with the staggering realities of the times that we're living in right now. We might feel the task ahead is so enormous that it's easier at times to just say, oh, it's too much, it's impossible, can't be done. But then there's Andrew, whom he doesn't let the enormity of the task prevent him from seeking an answer. 
He scans the crowd and pretty soon he spots something and he replies, oh, Jesus, here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fishes. And he's all excited. But then he continues, hmm, but how far will they go among so many? Andrew knows the boy doesn't have enough to feed the entire crowd, yet what is important is that instead of discounting his contribution, he suggests it to Jesus, remaining open to the possibility of something more. I love this. He remains open to the possibility of something more. As we say in New Thought, in Unity, this or something better. This or something better. And what else do we say? God is my source. Yes, this or something better. God is my source. Now, his possibility thinking, Andrew's possibility thinking, while not fully orbed, is awoken. And the miracle of multiplication of the loaves and the fishes, well, it becomes a key miracle of Jesus. And there is so much more that I want to share on this story, but I'm going to share it another time because there's a lot more that we can really explore. I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg here and focusing specifically on Andrew. So here's a few things that I see in Andrew, things that actually really excite me. He saw possibilities where others did not. And instead of pursuing the limelight, because he really, we don't get that he was a preacher or that we don't get any of this about Andrew, but he, what does he do? He demonstrates quiet strength, stability, and the ability to persevere. He represents that those that are behind the scenes are vitally and equally as important and that their voices also matter and that everyone has something to contribute. Now, part of awakening our spiritual power of strength is the ability to be in a situation that the world views as impossible, chaotic, disruptive, divisive, or scary, and have the ability to be still and to be a presence of peace. And it takes strength to be the calm in the midst of the storm. And now, beloveds, would you repeat with me? God's strength in me expresses as inner peace, even in challenging situations. God's strength in me expresses as inner peace, even in challenging situations. Now, Charles Fillmore, in The Revealing Word, said strength is the unlimited energy of God. And each of us has the energy of God in us. We're not limited to our own strength. Thank you, God. I am not limited to my own strength. You are not limited to your own strength. Isn't that good news to hear? So say with me, beloveds, strength is the unlimited energy of God. Strength is the unlimited energy of God. I have the energy of God in me. I have the energy of God in me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, you can, beloveds. Yes, you can. Yes, we can. So now let's move to the bonus gifts that come with the power of strength. Yes, bonus gifts. Now, I, I'm sure you thought that Christmas was over. All the goodies may be packed away, all the decorations, and you're thinking, well, could these be Valentine's gifts or birthday gifts or anniversary gifts? I don't know. They're bonus gifts just for all of us. So first of all, patience. Huh. I know that some of your words for this word, some of you have this word for the year. I'll get how to say it correctly in a moment. Yes, some of you have the word patience for this year. I 
I wonder if there's anyone who might be filming this that has the word patience for this year, Ron Pierre, <laughs> my beloved. But seriously, who wouldn't like a little bit more patience at times? I'm a pretty patient person myself, but at times I run out. I'm like, I'm done with being patient now. And then is when I really need a little bit more pa patience. When we lack patience, what happens? Well, we're constantly tested as people and situations are attracted to our impatience. Oh, isn't that fascinating? And aligning with the power of strength supports us in evolving our patience. Whenever you want more patience, be still. Breathe deeply and allow the I am presence to guide your thoughts and actions. And so say with me, beloveds, patience is not the ability to wait, but the ability to keep a good attitude while waiting. Isn't that true? <laughs> we keep a good attitude while waiting. Now, the affirmation, if you will, with me, please. God's strength in me expresses as patience. God's strength in me expresses as patience. Yes, it does. Now, the second bonus gift that comes with, with the power of strength is tolerance. And tolerance, well, it lets us accept that not everyone is going to be the same as us. And that's a good thing because we don't want a bunch of replications of ourselves running around. Life would be pretty boring, right? Not everyone's going to think, believe, or have the same values as us. Not everyone is going to react the same way in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Tolerance, well, it allows us to connect with people who are different, not just connect, but make deep, rich friendships too. But it's very important for me to say here, beloveds, that though tolerance, though we have tolerance, that it is in no way does it mean that we blindly accept actions of those intent on harming us or others. No, you know we don't do that. Because what are we called to do then? We're called to speak up. We're called to take peaceful actions that support a humane, just, kind, and equitable world for all of us. Khalil Gibran said, I have learned silence from the talkative, tolerance from the intolerant, and kindness from the unkind. And would you say the affirmation with me, beloveds? God's strength in me expresses as tolerance. God's strength in me expresses as tolerance. Now the third bonus gift that comes with the power of strength is steadfastness. And this is the ability to stay unwavering in spite of appearances. It's our ability to be firmly established in faith rather than giving up at the first hurdle, giving up at the first challenge. Steadfastness keeps us firm in purpose. When challenges arise, we do not give up. When goals and life don't go exactly according to plan, we refuse to stay discouraged for long. Now, it's very important that you note that I didn't say we never become discouraged because at times we're all going to get discouraged. We all do get discouraged at times but we don't take up residence in the land of discouragement. No, we don't take up residence there. We find safe, loving environments to express our feelings, to express our disappointment. We pray and then, energized by the strength and steadfastness of God, we pick ourselves up and we move forward. Beethoven said, this is the mark of a truly admirable person. 
steadfastness in the face of trouble. And here is the affirmation, if you would say it with me. God's strength in me expresses as steadfastness. God's strength in me expresses as steadfastness. Rather than looking for excuses as to why I can't do something, I focus my mind on why I can. I focus my mind on why I can. I focus my mind on why I can. Yes, we do, beloveds. Now, the fourth bonus gift that comes with the power of strength is balance. Some days we eat salads and we exercise. Some days we eat cupcakes and five slices of pizza and we wear stretchy pants. It's called balance. And in these particular days, beloveds, balance is not so much an hourly thing or how we looked at the end of the day. Were we productive on that day? I try to look at my balance more as a week. We're living through unprecedented times. Someday I might just take care of what I need to do with, to nurture myself during this time. And then the rest of the week, I might be very productive. So rather than looking at just one day, try to look at your week being of balance. You know, it's said that no one can pull us off balance without our permission. Huh, but it certainly seems that at times they can, don't, doesn't it? Now, when you find a person or a situation pushing your buttons, unwrap your gift of balance by aligning with God's strength, reconnecting to the presence of God and well-being within. And this will allow you to find and remain in your center. Rumi said, Life is a balance between holding on and letting go. Oh my goodness, isn't that true? So would you affirm with me, beloveds, God's strength in me expresses as balance. God's strength in me expresses as balance. I came across a prayer recently. I love its simplicity and it really seems to speak to the whole message that I've shared today and I invite you to say it with me. Dear God, all strength is in you. No wonder mine has not felt like enough. I let go of relying on my own strength. I receive yours. Thank you. Amen. Let's affirm that even further and anchor that. Divine Presence, Divine God, oh my goodness, at times we rely so much on our own strength. We just want to do it all. And we remember, we remember through this message and through the opening of our hearts that we don't have to do it all alone. We lay it down at the altar. We lay it down at the feet of the divine. We lay it down and we receive the strength of the divine within us, building us up, supporting us in all of our decisions, in all of our activities, on all of our, in all of our thoughts, feelings and emotions, in all of our actions. We pray for each and every single person around the planet during this very challenging time that each and every one would find within them the strength of support of the God of their understanding that uplifts them and gives them the strength that they need during these days. For every person on the front lines, all health workers, all people trying to get vaccines, for all in any type of financial hardship, for all that are grieving, for every single person around the planet. May the divine presence of strength enfold, uplift and support each and every one. Thank you, thank you God that this is so. We release, we let go and we know that it is so. And so it is. Amen. 
So this is the time for our financial blessings, beloveds, and we want to thank you for your generous generosity, your generous financial blessings. They are very, very important and very, very needed. If you haven't given for a while, I invite you to consider giving and sharing with your spiritual home because we know that as we give, we receive. And so I invite you to join me in an affirmation. I am a joyful sharer of the abundance of love in my heart. I remember as I give that God is my source and that as I give, I receive. Thank you, God, for the many blessings in my life. And so I invite you, beloveds, to know that you can make your financial blessings securely at unityoftempe.org or if you prefer by mail. And that address is also on the website. Your, your blessings are very appreciated and they are needed, beloveds. And so we're, in order to say thank you to you, we're going to have the thank you song, which is Zephyrin's song for the month. We're going to have that song right now to say thank you. I'll be back right at the end to close us out with the prayer for protection.
And now our prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. All is well and we are grateful. Beloveds, I love you and I will look forward to seeing you either next Sunday early morning at 10 a.m. on our Facebook Live or on our Thursday Zoom call, Prayer and Connect call at 10 a.m. or next Sunday on here. Have a have an absolute peace-filled week filled with knowing that the strength of God is in you. And so it is.